Good evening. Quick question for you. Is your action tracker set up to support your ability to execute your priorities in 2024? If they're not, if it's not, well, let's get ready to crush your goals, get your projects accomplished, achieve your objectives in 2024 by using an optimized action tracker. It's also known as your task manager by some. Uh, but to do that, accomplish that stuff, you have got to have your system set up for you to be able to execute with minimal friction. So we're going to dig into understanding the power of an effective action tracker and selecting the right tool and organizing that tool, creating a routine to maintain it because it does require a little bit of maintenance and then incrementally improving your action tracker as you go along so that it supports you achieving your goals, your objectives and completing your projects with minimal friction. If you're ready, say I'm ready in the comments so that we can get started. Welcome to the Purposeful Productivity Show with Florence. I'm Florence. I'm your host. And what I do is I coach professionals, nonprofit executives, small business owners, and faith-based organizations on how to streamline their productivity systems, fixing the points of friction and pain points that they have, which enables them to achieve their purpose and create value with greater efficiency. So that is what I do. And we're going to dive into five things to think about, five actions actually to take going into 2024 so that your action tracker is ready for you to achieve your goals and operate on purpose. I'm going to take a break real quick and welcome some folks into the show. I'm so glad to see you here. And of course, we've got none other than um, our great friends out there. Uh, we've got Roy. Thank you, Roy, for the shout out uh, this week in one of your uh, Vlogmas shorts. I really appreciate actually your video and your um, and the associated short that was kind of exciting for me to see. And welcome to the show, the emotional CEO, always here serving and remembering the live tribe. If you're not commenting and you're watching, welcome. If you're part of the Magical Replay crew, welcome. Love having you here. Want to serve you and give you value. And then, of course, we have our other moderator in the building with us, Frank Jackson. So let's get right into the topic. The first thing I'm going to tell you to do, and that'll go off the screen in a second, is to understand before you start buying, doing all this stuff, understand the power of an effective action tracker. Next to your calendar, there are three parts to your system that we're going to talk about this month. This is part two. Next to your calendar, your action tracker is the next most powerful part of your system. Now, why do I say that? Because it allows you to increase your productivity through an organized task management or action management process. It improves your focus because you can break down big tasks into smaller tasks and big goals into smaller goals that are very actionable and physically actionable. And let me explain what I mean by that. When I write my actions. I write them as very tangible actions to take. An example, if I need to schedule, let's say my goal is to schedule a meeting. My task is not to schedule the meeting. My task is to make a phone call, write an email, send a text message, post a comment or a DM on social media, any of those will work. Reach out and call someone on Slack or on Teams. Those are physical things I can do. So that's my action. The result ultimately is to have this meeting scheduled with the appropriate people. So having an effective action tracker allows you to break down larger goals into very concrete, actionable steps. It also helps you with prioritizing what you're going to do in what order so that you're operating efficiently 
rather than going back and forth and being inefficient in your task. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about my system. You've heard, if you've ever listened to any of my videos, especially around task management, you'll know I am both digital and paper. The core of my system is a digital system, which I'll get into a little bit later. But the reason I use paper is because I can jot it down very quickly. I then, because of my evening routine, I have a process to put all of that stuff that I've written down in the day as a part of my wrap up and thinking through the day and reflecting through the day. I get it all into my action tracker. The other thing that I do is many times if I'm just sitting thinking or if I'm driving so I can't write, my action tracker that I use allows me to get ideas, thoughts, actions, tasks, whatever into it a whole bunch of different ways. I can use our friend that starts with an S and speak to my phone, my iPad, my computer, and put something on the reminders app and it'll go into my action tracker. I use a, ta a note taking app called drafts on all of my devices on my phone, on my iPad on, and on my um, Mac computer. Same thing can shoot those right over in the draft. And I'll explain later why that's so important. But I track my actions every day. I don't necessarily focus on, in fact, I don't focus on completing everything on that list every day. I do set priorities. So it also allows you, this is part of the power, to actually see a record of what you've got, right? It's not rolling around in your head. You're not feeling the emotional overwhelm because you can't get it out of you. I learned the magic of getting information out of my head, out of my stomach, because I hold my stress in my stomach, and just be able to look at it objectively. Your action tracker or task manager allows you to get that information out and you can see it objectively. So it allows you to work through things in a way that you can't when you're just kind of sitting and stewing about it and trying to remember it and hold on to it. It gets rid of all of that. So ultimately, if you embrace the fact that this tool would lead you to increase productivity and a greater sense of control over your load, your workload, your family load, all of that, your, your business load, your volunteer load, it will assist you in setting yourself up for success. If that made sense to you, let me know in the chat. Uh, would love to know that I'm giving you value and the way I know that is by you commenting and engaging with me. So let's go on to number two. Number two is now that we understand the power of it, we've got to have the right tool for us. The right tool for us. There are thousands, literally, and I'm going to talk about digital tools first. There are thousands. If you open up any app store, whether it's Android or iOS, whether it's the Mac store, and type in task manager to do list, literally thousands of applications, just do a search on, on anywhere and you will find thousands. Ultimately, however, you need to find the tool that works the way your brain works and then work with it. So I'm going to tell you how I came. I use two digital. And, and the reason I use two is one is everything outside of my day job. Everything outside of my day job goes into one tool. Because of the work that I do, my day job has a tool. But I have both of them on one phone. This is my work phone. It's an old iPhone 6S. It works just fine. I don't need it for anything else. So I have both of the tools I use on this one device. That means no matter where I am, I've got access to both quickly and I can put information in quickly. That's the reason I have two of them. The two that I use is OmniFocus, which is a Mac only. You can I put it on my computer, iPhone, iPad. If you are not in the Mac ecosystem, there are tools that will work. One of the ones that is really, really good, 
that cross cross platform is to doist. There's Asana. There's a plethora of them. You could even use uh, Notion or Evernote. I chose not to use Evernote as my main uh, task management tool because I'm just my brain is wired toward these. The other thing to think about when there are some things to think about when you're picking. Oh my goodness. Oh, that's scary. Um, there are some things to think about when you're picking your tool, however, because you are unique. There are no two humans who are exactly alike. So you have to find what works the way your brain works. That means write down wherever you write, record it, verbalize it, get it out of your head, the things that are important to you, the things to think about, ease of use. Do, do you have something you already know how to use? And if you don't, how easy does it need to be for you to use it? What does it need to look like? If it's ugly to you and it's not attractive to you, you're not going to use it. It has to be something that inspires you. When you pick it up, you want to work with it. So how, what does it look like? How does it make you feel when you pick it up and look at it? Okay. How flexible is it? In my industry, we have something that we try to avoid having clients do, and it's called a swivel chair process. That means having information or data in one computer application and to get it out, someone has to physically type it and swivel over to the other application and enter it. Avoid that. It is a waste of your 1,440 minutes in a day. So how can you get information into and out of your tool? For me, OmniFocus, I can get my information in, my task, my ideas into it, using my phone, using my computer, using a web uh, browser, using um, my iPad. I can get it in there a whole bunch of different ways. And I don't have to even open the application. I can use um, iOS shortcuts. I can use iOS reminders, which means it's on all those devices. I can use my drafts application, which is a note taking application. So a bunch of different ways to get information in. So I'm not stuck always having to open this up. These are things I'm giving you tips to think about as you choose, decide what tool am I going to adopt? Things to think about. That also gets into what we call integration. That's moving data or moving your information between systems. If it's easy, you're more likely to use it. If you've got to figure out how to get the data over there each time you want to move it, you were in a hurry and you just said, hey, A, or A, hey, S, or hey, G, put eggs on my grocery list, and now you've got to figure out how to get it out of that, wherever they put it, and get it into your task management system, you're not going to use it. You're simply, because it's, it's too much friction. So think about the things that are important to you when you are choosing your system. <laughs> I'm going to come back to some of the comments because I'm loving them. And, and we want to get away from some of that. I do use uh, paper, and I shared earlier the reason I use paper. The third one is now that you've picked your system, You've chosen the application. I'm going to stick with my OmniFocus application. One of the first things you want to do after you admire the fact that you got it is give a little bit of thought and planning to organize that system. I've got both of the tools I use organized almost identical to each other. And I say almost because they're slightly different, so there's some things you do a little different. I have two groups of tasks that I set up or actions. One are projects, actions that are associated with actual projects. Projects are things that you have an outcome to achieve and it has a time associated with it. It is time bound. Then I have 
other actions categorized in my areas of focus or my routines. These are parts of your life that they just go on and on and on and on. They don't end. Taking care of your vehicle, doing your laundry, cooking, regular meetings with your team. Whatever those parts of your life are, that they just go on and they're not going to have an end, separate them out. Many of the activities, many of the actions we take in that areas of focus, they're routine. We do them over and over and over again. So build, use the time to organize those routines in your action tracker so they just come up and you can say they're done. There are some automations you can do depending on what you you have that can reduce the, even the amount of energy that you put into managing those routines. So think about that. Then think about where and who and what you need. Put categories in or tags in or whatever color coding to represent key parts of how you need to operate. Example. I have a tag that says errands. I don't see any of those tasks or actions until I'm leaving the house. Why? There are things that require me to get myself up, go out of the house, and go someplace. There's a category I have for church. Why? There are actions that I can only do when I'm physically at church. I don't need to see them any other time unless I'm there. There are other things that require me to be with a person, my brother, my other half, my best friend, a colleague, a staff member. It doesn't matter. If I'm not engaging with those individuals, I don't need to see those. They can be shoved in a corner. Don't have to think about them. So give yourself some thought about how do I segment these actions, that's the organization because it will help you be really, really productive. If you are working with a business partner and you've got a bunch of actions to cover with that business partner, then you don't need to think about anything else except when you're with them, what are the things we need to cover? And I do this in both systems that I use. I organize them that way so that it's easy for me to know what I'm working with and when I'm working with it. My action tracker system, this is one to think about, also has geotagging, which means let me know when I'm getting close to Costco or let me know when I'm getting close to the grocery store or let me know when I'm getting close to wherever it is, pop up and show me the things that, that are on the list that's relative to that, to that location. So geotagging is another one. That's number three, organizing your system so it can be effective. Number four, this goes into a little bit of the routine, but create a routine for your system to maintain it. What does that mean? I use an inbox methodology. If you've ever read, heard of David Allen and the book, Getting Things Done, that's where it comes from. So I just throw things in there. Well, once a day, I need to move those actions to where they need to be, the category, the project, the tag, whatever they need to be. Create a routine for yourself, whether it's first thing in the morning, at the end of your day, once a week, whatever it is, but make it a habit. And this is a great one to put in your action tracker until it becomes a habit for you. So that you're not losing track of what's in there and it doesn't become a big dumping ground. Create those routines. Create a workflow for yourself. I get a cup of coffee. I sit in my favorite chair and then I open up my iPad and I just work through moving actions around to where they need to be. It may take me 10, 15 minutes. Then I don't have to do it again for a day, several days, whatever it is for you. It depends on how much you capture. Okay? 
So that's number four that you want to, before 2024 hits, put that in your plan to be sure you're organizing your action tracker. Now, if you use paper and you primarily work on paper, this process still works because you can establish the area of your paper system, your planner, whether it's a notebook, a bullet journal, a Hobonichi, whatever it is you use, put establish where you're just going to do brain dump and get stuff in. And then you go through that written list and you put it where it needs to be. If you put it in the calendar, if you put it on a single page, if you draw a line down the middle of the page and half of the page is actions and the other half is your schedule. So the process that I'm talking about works even if you solely use paper. It actually still works. The last one is this is where I really had to put some work in and I'm still putting work in is making sure you're reviewing how things are going and whether they're working for you and apply incremental improvements. 1% better once a day, once a week, once a month, not revamp your whole system and throw the baby out with the bathwater as the saying goes incremental the way I name my task is not working let me think about that the way I have my task categorized is not working maybe I need to think more about what kind of energy I have do I have a lot of energy do I not have energy whatever it is for you that's not working do I have the right projects listed am I missing projects am I making the projects too small am I making the projects too big all of those can be incremental improvements that you apply. Can I add automation into my system? I've added automation. Let me give you some examples. I told you I use text expansion. Many of my tasks now, the beginning part that says make a call or schedule, or well, I don't really use schedule, but make a call, uh, text, get back to this person in three days by email, those are text expansion snippets now. So rather than me having to figure out how, what to type and I write it one way, one time and another way, another time, I use text expansion snippets and the tasks are written pretty much the same way all the time. Then I can do a search and find all of the tasks that says call, colon, phone number, blah. And I actually, because I've got different phone numbers that I use for different purposes, I actually put the last four digits of the phone number in the, um, in the uh, task manager. So I'm seeing comments come in and I want to address these comments because I think they're wonderful and we are assisting each other. And one of the things we can do is continue to assist each other. I use... I told you I use paper. So I use three paper systems together, which sounds kind of crazy because since I use do it digital, uh, let me see if I can reach over here. Of course, I've got my Hobonichi. This is what stays on the desk. I had to reach way over and get it. But this stays on the desk and I'm actually still revamping how my 2024 will be used. This one is my, it's almost like a scratch pad. During the day, during the evening when I'm thinking and I just need to get thoughts out and I love to write with uh, fountain pens, this is fountain pen print friendly paper in this thing, um, I use this. So it stays on my desk pretty much all the time. This one, uh, and links to these are in the, the below in my description if you want to see. I use this as a very specific way. Um, I started pulling out my big rocks so that I could just sit and think about them for the week. So it's not a daily planner for me. I started out that way, but I was like, that doesn't work for me. But my weekly big rocks so that week by week, I can go back and say, did I really accomplish? What was I thinking? So that's how I use this. And it's quite powerful. The third one I use, and Shira, I think you're going to love this one. I use this as my brain dump when I want to do a big brain dump 
and I don't want to be distracted with whatever else I've written or anything. I just want to sit somewhere with a cup of coffee. I'm, I love coffee. So sit somewhere with a cup of coffee and just get it out of my brain. I use this because these are individual per day and it's big so I can get a lot in here. Again, a link to each of these is in the descriptions if it's something that you want to ex explore. So let's see what folks are saying out here. I'm going to work my way up. Cher Jones, so glad to have you in the house. Uh, I love, love, love dot paper. Yes, I like dot grid paper too. And um, Hobonichi is a little, um, it's not dot grid, it's little tiny square grids, but it works. And it's Toma River paper, which is, it will, ch Toma River paper will just change your relationship with paper, period. And she also says, I still brain dump on paper, but I have to force myself to immediately enter it into my program when I'm done. So here's a tip. I mentioned if, in, and if, if you use uh, iOS, let me know. Um, if you do, there's an application called Drafts. It's free to start with. It has the best digital um, transcription of any, any application that I've used other than something high-end like Dragon Nuance. I will sit and just read into the thing, the stuff, instead of, yes, it's iOS, and just read into it. And the reason I can do that is it, the paid version, which is pretty inexpensive, you can then, it has integration with just about every major task management system out there, including things like Evernote and Notion and Asana and whatnot. So I can push those, those ideas into my task, into OmniFocus, or in my case, Microsoft To Do, without having to rekey or reorganize or, or anything. So yeah, drafts, great tool. Check it out, see if you like it. So especially if you use iOS. Um, Denise says, hey Frank, I like the inter incremental task review. Yeah, I'm going to need to review this, but breaking it down into smaller tasks or steps is helpful. Absolutely. And it, stops you from being overwhelmed. It's more task, but you can get through them. You can, you can absolutely get through them quickly doing it that way. And it's concrete, right? So when you look at it, you're not figuring out now, what do I have to do? What do I need? It's very explicit. And think of it this way, Denise, when you're writing your task, Write them for your future self for when you're tired and you're sick, you're overwhelmed, you got too much going on. In the military, for those who don't know, I was in the military, I was in the Navy. One of the things that I learned was the reason the checklists are so effective, they are effective because when you haven't had sleep and something happens and you've got to execute and ex execute immediately, there is no opportunity for you to make a mistake or skip a step or not understand what to do, even when you're tired, even when you're sick and you still have to operate. Treat your action tracker the same way for your future self. When you're not feeling well, when things aren't going well, when you're overwhelmed, when you've got sh a short amount of time to accomplish a lot, okay? Um, Denise also says, my biggest problem is not having one place to put it. Yes, ultimately, you've got to have one place where everything goes. I have two strictly because I have two parts of my life, my life life and my day job, and I can't mix the two. And I've pretty much had that my entire career, so I'm accustomed to it. I've always had where I had to keep them separate. But one place, everything in my personal life goes in one place. For me, that's OmniFocus. All of my activities, all of my actions, all of my tasks, all of my projects ultimately end up in OmniFocus. And then I put links to other supporting apps like Evernote, 
for each one. So you use paper, but you're trying to be more digital. Use what works for you, Denise. Don't be aware of fighting how you naturally will function. Because if you're fighting yourself too much, you'll spend more time fighting how you naturally operate than you will be in productive. So just be aware of that and pay attention to whether you're fighting against how you actually work. Okay, Cher says, I was using multiple tools trying to find my system plus paper and pen. Then I just had to finally choose one because I was all over the place. Now I'm just using one pro called Nifty. I'm not familiar with Lift Nifty. Now you're going to make me go look at it because a client may want something and it may be something I can use. Thank you. I'm, I'm not familiar with that one. See, there are thousands. Steve and I are watching you live on the big screen. That's why I said it was scary. Oh, I'm not sure about that. So if you have questions, let me know. Tech. Troublemaker said, I'm mostly ready. I want to applaud you, Roy, because you have been dropping content every day. And I love the way you're doing. It's very authentic. It's genuine. It's purely who you are. You're living your life and making it fit in with you living your life, taking care of the things you have to take care of. So I applaud you for what you're doing um, with respect to getting your content out every day. So that's what we've gone to. I don't see any questions. I'm going to do a quick search here and see if there are any questions, the Q colon trick. And if there are any, I will answer them. I don't see any. So no one has a question. No, so I'm going to just say, if you are ready, if you, if you are ready to tackle your action tracker, you can watch the video that's going to, I always get this wrong be posted here. It is last week's show talking about getting your calendar optimized for 2024. Your calendar and your action tracker are two of the essential